very seldom in life do you get to play with tech that is as expensive and as advanced as what I was able to play with over the last couple of months but this is just phase one in a series of what I want to do. But before we begin, there are some massive thanks that I need to give for the people that made this possible. That is AMD, Corsair, Asus, and Kingston, without whom this video wouldn't have been possible. Let's start off by going through the parts of this build. The first part is the motherboard, which is the WRX90E Sage from Asus. It's actually a EEB board, which is basically a form factor of the board. It's massive. And and we had to do a little bit of modding to the actual motherboard, removing off the heat plate at the back to make sure that it fits into the case, which we'll get to soon. Next is the star of the show. It's the CPU. It is the Ryzen Threadripper Pro, the 7995WX, which is a monster 96 core, 192 thread CPU with 384 megs of L3 cache. Next on the list is the case. The case is the Corsair 7000D. Now note that this is not designed to take EEB size motherboards, but because of the sheer amount of space inside it, we were able to make it work by removing a couple of beauty panels. It can accommodate EATX, but this is EEB. Now we will be doing a phase two where we build it into a bigger case where we can accommodate a EEB board and I can put on the back heat plate again on the motherboard, but it didn't affect the results whatsoever. And it was actually quite a good fit for this motherboard. Next is the RAM, which is quintessential to the performance of the CPU. Now, thank goodness that Kingston actually had an eight kit. There are eight DIMMs on the motherboard and you do want to fill that out with a kit as far as humanly possible because of balancing and overclocking. Now the kit is 16 by eight, totaling 128 gigs of RAM. It is CL32, so beautiful latency at 6,000 mega transfers. Next is the storage in which we used four of the MP600 Core XTs from Corsair. Now these are PCIe 4 at 5,000. There are four of them at two terabytes, which totaled eight, which we put in in RAID 0. That was a very strong wind outside. Cape Town is very windy today. Now, a lot of you might be asking, but why didn't you use PCIe 5 drives? And the reason is simple. It would have been a large expense for a little return. At this point, I don't feel the point behind actually spending behind PCIe 5 where you're not gonna get the return. It's also not what we were testing for. We weren't testing for transfer speeds. We were testing the actual rig as a whole. Next is the PSU, which was the Corsair AX1600i. Now we needed this much power because both the GPU and the CPU especially could get very hungry, especially when overclocking. So this was pretty much perfect for a single GPU CPU configuration. Lastly is the GPU, which is compliments of, well, actually me. It is the RTX A6000, not the Ada Lovelace, it's the previous generation, that's why it's the A6000, but this was the perfect card, it's a 48 gigabyte card and perfect for a workstation, so it really complemented the entire setup to bring it together for the test that we were doing. But let's go through the results and the performance off camera, there's just something that I want to mention before we do that, which is the power of offset which I will explain when we actually go through the results. This video was sponsored by Social Bee. Social Bee is an AI powered social media management tool that integrates all of your social media into one convenient hub. From content categorization, AI generated social media plan, single source posting, AI assisted content generation, scheduling, and even comprehensive analytics with competitor insights, Social B will not only help you streamline and optimize your content, but save you hours, which you can use to conceptualize and produce content. Use code CLOVER50X3 for 50% off your first three months. To start off, we need to know what we worked with. So the CPU is obviously the Threadripper 7995WX, and that was attached to the motherboard, the ASUS WRX90E Sage. For the RAM, we actually had a kit that Kingston sent, and that was eight by 16 gigs, which equaled 128 gigs, CL32 at 6,000 megahertz. So the fact that they had an eight kit was actually amazing. The SSDs, we did go a generation back because the speed wasn't really needed for the test that we are doing, but we did want to see what the rateability was for the setup. So we used four by MP600 Core XTs. These were two terabytes, so in RAID zero, it was eight terabytes. And we'll obviously show the results because we want to see all the PCIe lanes working with a graphics card there as well. The PSU, we had a Corsair AX1600i Platinum. The 
GPU, we had an NVIDIA reference card, the A6000, so not the Ada Lovelace version, but this is a 48 gig card. The cooler was the Corsair H170i IQ RGB 420 millimeter. The case was the Corsair 7000D Black, and now this was not typically meant to accommodate EEB boards, but it actually did a phenomenal job. And lastly, the thermal was a thermal grizzly thermal based. Starting off with the results, the first one is 3D Mark CPU. Now, I only did this basically to have a record, and it's not a result that we can count on because it can't use the maximum amount of threads, which is the 192 threads found in the 7995WX. However, it did score a score of 23466. So it does top the charts, but again, you can't really look at it in any factual way. Moving on to our first big result, Performance Test 11. We can see right on the far right, we hit a score of 144,405. So massive result coming out of the 7595WX. But right next to that, we have the Threadripper 7980X with a score of 137,775. Now this is a phenomenal result coming out of the 7980X, which I actually note for the end of the testing, but this is achieved with a lot less threads on the CPU. Then just for reference, we go down to the Threadripper Pro, the 7975WX, and all the way down to the older version of Threadripper, the 7960X. Onto CPU-Z, and we will look at single core performance, far left hitting 700. Now this is low comparing to something like the i7-14700KF, this is because the CPU is not bought for its single core performance, it's bought for its multi-core, multi-thread performance. Now, this is overclockable to be able to achieve high results, but this is something that we will talk about at a later stage. Now, the complete opposite comes in when we look at multi-thread, multi-core performance, where we hit a score of 55,357. Now, comparing that to the 7960 of 22,009, this is a massively dwarfed score comparing those two together. Moving on to Cinebench 2024, which is becoming a really nice metric to measure CPU performance, which I feel personally is better than R23, but that is a topic for another day. The score achieved on multi-core performance was 5,844, and we see yet again the 7980X coming in at 5,531, so not too far away from the 7995 with a lot of cores in difference there. We can see going all the way to the end, the 2011 achieved by the 3960X, so we can see massive generational improvement. Cinebench R24 single core performance, we can see a mirror of CPU-Z with its low performance on 108. Again, I reiterate, this is not bought for its single core performance, but we can see the i9-14900KF hitting a score of 139. So not too bad comparatively here, considering the core difference. Moving on to Cinebench R23, and this is where things get really interesting. Now, let me get some out of the way the 7980x compared to the 7995wx again neck and neck the scores of 98322 versus 100369 is negligible covered in the conclusion but what i want to draw your attention to is something called the vos test which is voltage offset now literally just by playing with the voltage offsets in the bios i was able to get a score of 110,484. this is not really overclocking or pbo it's literally just playing around with the voltage offset which you can do quite easily and it's recommended to play in the regions of about minus 10 to minus 25. I was playing at around 4050. Honestly, can't remember. I should have taken better notes. But again, my score 110,484 just by playing with offsets. I don't think it's going to give you any day to day benefits, but it was really cool just to see how the voltage offsets affected the performance of the CPU. On to single core performance, we got a score of 1,813. And when comparing to its brothers and sisters, not too bad considering the core count. Blender benchmark, we had a score of 1,878, followed closely by the 79. 80x again at 1734 we can see the rest of the results taper off quite significantly as we go down the pecking order but really really good result for blender benchmark in this render moving on to something that i want to include in the future benchmarks is something called v-ray the dots in front of you won't really make sense and i'll do my best to explain it but v-ray is a very good indicator of cpu renderability now the score with the red background or the red outline is my score i hit a score of 139,821. but if you actually go onto v-ray itself and see the benchmarks that people have posted we can see that one score hit 208,157, which is massive 
This is right next to another score of two epics where you actually put them in a server board so you have two epics right next to each other and those are 96 core 192 threads. So technically we have 192 cores with 384 threads and that hit a score of 228,766. So maybe this wasn't as overclocked as the 7995WX, but a very good indicator of the CPU's ability for render. Moving on to Crystal Disk Mark, and the reason that I want to show you this is because of the multiple lanes available in a 7995WX. So we had four SSDs plus the graphics card at X16, and we had a score here of 17,430, showing that with four SSDs and a graphics card, there was more than enough lane bandwidth in order to actually achieve high scores. The 7995WX actually has 128 usable lanes, so if you are using this for multi-lane purposes, it's definitely a good choice of CPU. Now, lastly, on to the stats, and the first one that we'll start with is max temperature. Most of these are pretty much the average temperatures because of the nature of the test. Now, in Cinebench 2024, we hit a max and averaging of 71 degrees. So this is both a credit to the cooler, but also a credit to the CPU and how well the thermals are managed in conjunction with the power draw. For Cinebench R23, a max of 57. For ADA CPU and FPU stress, we had a 68. And for Blender, we had a 69. Power draw was pretty much equal across the board, except for Cinebench R23 with 191, but the power draw is going to the max of 350. Again, I didn't overclock, I just use offsets. Overclocks will come in the future but this shows just how power efficient the CPU is. Lastly, and this is more for informational purposes, is max frequency and core effective. We can see that the max frequency hit was 5141 and this was mirrored across Cinebench 2024 and Blender. And then the highest of the core effective we got was from Blender of 4243. This is because it's a more stabilized test with regards to its demand. So we can see that the core effectives are changing in between. Now my closing notes on the performance would be that unless you are going to utilize the threads of the 7995WX, the 7980X seems like a better all around shot depending on what works loads you're going to do. The core temps were amazing but this was noted by pretty much every reviewer around the world and lastly I did find PBO to be a bit temperamental but I will be doing that when I do the overclocks on the next video. Just a note before we move on to the conclusion you would have obviously seen that through the results we had no Adobe benchmarking through Puget Systems. Now this is because I'm waiting for a response from Adobe so apologies to people that were waiting for Adobe results I will do them in the next phase. Hopefully I get a response soon. It's just a massive expense to get all of those softwares to be able to do them just for benchmarking. So I'm just waiting for a little bit of assistance there. So please just uh, hang on tight for them. Onto the conclusion and let's call a spade a spade. This is a flex build. A lot of people wouldn't be able to afford it. And even if you could afford it, you probably won't be able to use it or get the full utilization out of it. It's just when you're presented the opportunity to be able to work with tech like this, especially as a reviewer and a tech lover, you don't say no to these opportunities. But for the small percentage of people that can afford and can utilize this type of system and will get good use out of the system, you can see just how powerful it is and what a lifesaver it can be and a time saver if you are using a system like this, especially if the cost is in line with the benefit. Guys, that's it for phase one. In phase two, we will be building it into a different rig. Hopefully I can get another A6000 and do MV Link so you can see the benefits of having two cards in a system like this. And hopefully we'll be able to get those Adobe results. Hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers and goodbye.